I remember, I remember growing up in an area ridden with crime All the ones I looked up to are now doing time Incarcerated and locked away in a feral state of mind Locked up with fellow believers having the same answers to the questions of how, what, where and why Just to end up in a pen, a pen of animals, a pen written with the words of young men and women lacking true identity Lacking the idea of who they are, conditioned by the media to become puppets for society A direct result of their environment Taught to live in poverty for their whole life until retirement Not being told to dream, it seems they want to create a team of followers and not leaders A team of men pleasers being taught to do as I say and not as I do With nothing being done only to hear someone write on their Instagram bio Gone too soon She was a young girl searching for love in all the wrong places Surrounded by others who were busing cases A life of poverty being sold with the idea of being a novelty not too soon she was groomed and brought into the underworld of illegal activity and violence Being threatened with permanent silence if she snitched coupled with the assurance of being rich Desperation, love and acceptance is all she desired Which caused her to be the number one employee to be hired Propelled headfirst into conspiracies, robberies, kidnappings What's happening? Her heart was still lacking something key The affirmation she was searching for was never found she felt there was a hidden treasure deep somewhere within this But as they say, ignorance is bliss This seemed to be the norm Nothing she could do could get her out of this storm So this must be it This seems to be her life until she ends up in prison or dead A lifestyle of running from the feds Going from bed to bed being used and abused by a boy she's barely met A life on the edge of this metal object A knife Holding both her past and future ransom the only strength she had, had been taken Her Samson, where her strength lied, was no more Dissolved into an acidic culture Cycling through pain and anguish Pain and anguish She was roaming through the darkness Desperately searching for the light Clutching her hand against the cold shank Allowing her to regain her power she once lost Her companion added extra security But for what cost? A price that could not be bought or sold with false perception of being bold Being an open target on a dartboard Silhouettes in the street lights looking menacing coming closer A heart beating fast and faster, blood racing as what looked like a car pulled up Rushing adrenaline, not a case of darker melanin A situation beginning with class Poverty being the main factor until the knife clapped her An empty applause from an empty street and a silent pause her friend panicking, her knowledge of CPR was severely lacking All she knew was to hold a clock to the bloody wound No one was around to help and time was at the essence Just a girl crying, Lord if you help, I will learn my lesson Blue, red, red, blue, the pattern continued Circles, triangles and a light flash like an ongoing view The world once bright seemed to pull darker and darker as the tunnel began to enclose around her Blurs of green, black and white men encompass the expanse of her vision Hands compressing the incision Sound seemed to disappear as she strained to listen The ringing in her ears she once heard was made faint Coupled with a voice in the background shouting Breathe! Breathe. Breathe. It seemed she was going to leave for good Her last speech was Sorry mum I wish I could have done more for you before I died But as she attempted it only came out as a wheezing sigh my daughter was stabbed. It was, was the worst thing that could have ever happened. I remember thinking, I really, really hope that she's okay. Please, I beg the Lord that she's okay. I was completely devastated. I felt cold. This was something that I would never wish on anybody. I had to think, who should I call? Without causing any concern because at that point I didn't know whether I'd lost her 
but I just needed someone to talk to. It took some time for me to gather my thoughts because there was a million and one things that run through my mind. But again, I was just praying that she was okay. I remember, I remember seeing hurt and damaged children turn into hurt and damaged adults. I see a culture of mankind repeating a cycle of pain, a stain that never goes away, clear and visible but nothing to clean the lifetime of damaged souls. From when time began, there are three main issues with man. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes and the pride of life. Selfishness and leviciousness has consumed our society. Why don't we make helping others less unfortunate our priority? Instead of blindly believing the lies shown in media played by those in high authority. I can't believe that my life has taken this turn. One minute I was sitting in the living room with Mumsy and next I was wondering if this was going to be my last breath. Things have been so hard over the last month or two. I have no idea. I have no clue. I've completely lost track of time and my mum's been so worried but at least the situation brought us closer together. My friends have really been there for me and have been so supportive alongside my mum and I'm so glad that they're there for me. The doctors said to us that I'm really lucky to be alive. That night, the blade perforated my bowel and they were unable to repair it. Now I'm stuck with this hole in my stomach and this thing called a colostomy bag. It's nasty because I've got to do my business in it and throw it down the toilet. And it's affected my self-confidence there because I don't think I'll be able to go anywhere. Sometimes I even think to myself like, would it have been better if I died that night? And the feeling of living the rest of my life like this is the worst feeling I can imagine at the moment. And I'm on crutches too, because they stabbed my upper thigh. And I had to have a blood transfusion because I lost so much blood. As they said, I'm lucky to be alive. That night was a blur to me. All I remember is when I fell to the floor and that's the only part when I realized I was stabbed. Mum said that we're gonna move out the hood and start a new life, have a new start. And I couldn't agree more. I'm so anxious now. I'm terrified of knives. And I have a panic attack every time I see one. I can't even go into the kitchen. And I don't even know how many ops I have now. But I know I'll never get over this situation. My mum said I need to see a psychiatrist. And we need to get some family mediation so we can work on our relationship. Although I'm blessed to still be alive, that night still ruined my life. Ruined my life. My life. My life. My life. My life.